Well, another season in the championship for Huddersfield, but a very, very tasty summer transfer window has been had. Let's see how we've done. I will admit to one mistake. We've made too many loan signings. There is match day rules in the squad and some of our loan players are not going to get very much game time despite being good players. We'll start with our outs though, the first of which was Mark Agu, who ended up joining Olympiacos for £13.5 million. Pounds. Now, a very, very good centre-back for the championship, but we had a good number of options at centre-back. We've signed a couple as well. So, um, obviously, some of the signings were in retaliation for this uh, sale happening, but £13.5 million for 25 years old, he didn't really have the potential to grow. I'm more than happy with that. John Stankovic was a deal already agreed last season. Went to join Fiorentina for six and a half million pounds. Another centre back leaving the club. Big wages as well, so happy to get him out. Albion Ajeti had huge wages and he's went and joined Al Jazeera for five point seven five million pounds. He was actually a decent player for us, you know. He wasn't a player who I was too excited to be actually putting in our starting eleven, but he did do well when given the game time. But it's time to move on and upgrade. Next up was Emiliano Marcondes, who joined Millwall for £500,000. A player who was never, ever going to see game time this season, so happy to get him off the wage bill. Christopher Thomas, he was a left-back. Pretty, pretty dead, really. He was our backup left wing-back, and he has left the club to join Nottingham, uh, Notts County. Uh, Dan Yeoman was our backup goalkeeper. He's left to join Millwall for 62 k A couple of other seals there as well. Liam Cooper was our fifth-choice centre-back. I think he's went and joined Preston North End. And they are paying his wages for the rest of the season. And that takes us to the inns. So £24.5 million pounds spent all in all. We'll start with the loans. Christian North was signed from Chelsea. Uh, he's going to be our backup goalkeeper for the rest of the season. A loan signing. He looks actually quite good and he, could, he has got the potential to grow. But I'm not the club that it's going to happen at. It was starting left winger will be Sofiane Mezain. Who have signed from Paris Saint-Germain on loan for the rest of the season. And this boy looks a little bit special. He'll be playing on the left-hand side as the inverted winger. And I'm expecting absolutely huge things from him. Hopefully we'll see that come to fruition as we move on to our next loan signing again from PSG. And I'm hoping this boy might be the new Sebastiano Esposito. David Oru have signed. He looks pretty good. He looks really, really good. I think he's going to be top goal scorer for us. Top goal scorer in the championship. I'm certainly hoping he will be. And I'm hoping he will lead us to glory and win the championship this season. That is the target, regardless of what my board say. I think they're just expecting promotion. But um, I want to win it. Tristan Clark, next one coming in. Back up right wing back from Spurs. <sighs> Not going to get much game time. As long as uh, Burgos stays injury free, he will be the starting one. Robin Vossin. He was never a signing I was at planning to make. But he became available, he was interested in joining and he instantly becomes the best centre-back at the club. And he's on loan from Atletico Madrid for the rest of the season. He's one of the reasons why we've overstepped our bounds in terms of loan signings. He, I just couldn't resist, I had to sign him. Ben Beachy rejoins the club from West Ham. He's going to be sort of our backup right winger. Um, he played really, really well, even though it's a player role that he's not familiar with. These maybe You can discount maybe six of these games when he was starting up top alongside Prince of Porto last season. The rest, all of his goals, I think, came from right wing and he played really, really well there. Um, he can also play up front, obviously, so he will be probably get some game time when he starts there as well. And I'm a relatively cheap deal. Happy to bring him in. Ignacio Galvan from Racing Club for the rest of the season. Back up left wing back. Nothing more to be said here. Um, left wing back and right wing back are really going to be problem positions for us going forward. There's not that many players who can play there naturally, so... Um, uh, he's, he's probably not going to get any game time as long as Luke Daly remains fit. Probably the best signing of the window, Osvaldo Rojas from Manchester City on loan. Again, I was not planning on making this signing. Um, it's just, he's too good. He's a Premier League player and he's playing for us in the Championship. Um, 18 years old, Chilean. Man City, he's, he's just special. Um, I couldn't resist. I shouldn't have done it. I really shouldn't. We're going to miss, some of our starting players are going to miss out now. But um, when you get the opportunity to sign players of that sort of quality, you just can't turn it down. Next up was Jorge Coronado, who signed from Universidad de Chile for £1.6 million. He's a backup left winger. We were really That was a problem position for us all summer, and I had to bite the bullet on somebody. So I bit the bullet on him. I think he looks quite good, um, particularly for a backup. His pace is electric, so um, we'll see how that goes over the course of the season. 
we did end up signing the Finnish striker who we pinpointed in the January transfer window. Alexi is what we're going to call him. I am retraining him to play on that right-hand side to be more... Uh, get him as much game time as possible. As long as he's comfortable there, he's comfortable up front, we're going to try and give this boy a lot, a lot of game time. And £2.6 million pounds for someone of this quality is very, very good business. Next up was Gaston Fontana who might find his game time limited because of the signing of Osvaldo Rojas. £5 million from Belgrano. He's a very, very talented central midfielder. We're retraining him to play in the deeper role should he be required there as backup. But he's one of the ones who might be sacrificed by all these loan signings and I should have really, really planned out my transfer strategy a little bit better. But when the transfer window goes on, new players become available as the transfer window starts coming to a close and I can't really predict that. Terence Platt from Benfica, 5.75 million pounds. He will be our starting right winger and he looks very, very tasty. If he can improve those mental attributes, I will be a very, very happy man. Physically spot on, technically spot on. It's just the mentals. We really need him to start improving them if possible. And Rogerio Santos was our final signing, seven million pounds. We signed him in anticipation for selling Mark Gill. And before we signed uh, Robin Boisson from Atletico Madrid, he's okay. He, he come, he's came to Rossi, he was a five-star player by me scouts. Turns out once he's in the squad, he's more of a four-star player, potential-wise anyway. He probably will still get the starting time and the game time alongside the Atletico Madrid centre-half. We'll have to wait and see how the season goes. We've got two good young English centre-halves there, and it will be a shame to waste their potential, but £7 million were signed him for. I'm a bit disappointed with that one. So that concludes our transfer business. We made a net profit of £2 million, which is uh, not uh, too bad considering we still have £21 million available in the wages with 180 k available in the wage budget. We have agreed a deal with Killian Adam to sign up for £2.5 million. I didn't realise he couldn't join until next season, which is why we ended up signing that Chilean at left wing. Otherwise, he would have been the man who was playing back up on that left-hand side. But he just doesn't join us next summer. He's probably not going to be a player we use now if we are in the Premier League at that point. And that takes me to the games. We're already two games into the league season. I didn't want to uh, start the season before we'd completed the transfer window. And it's been two wins. A 3-0 home win against Nottingham Forest. Ben Vici and Alexi getting two goals there. And a 4-1 away win against Peterborough. David Oru, Ruben Burgos and Osvaldo Ro Rojas with two goals from certain midfield completing the win. And of course that saves us like top of the championship table. Six points plus six goal difference, two games, two wins. Let's get into the first game of the season that we're going to do a live come on, which will be a home tie against Derby County. So we do have some issues with the squad now. We've got so many loan players and you're only allowed five in your match day squad, which is a bit of an issue. <laughs> Not something I thought too much about. I can't even blame the two signings that were made late on because we would still be two signings over the limit. So a lot of our backup players that were signed on loan are not actually going to be on the bench. They're only ever going to get game time really when uh, our starters are injured, which is not ideal, but uh, it's something we're just going to have to deal with. In terms of today's lineup, then Joel Pereira, our regular goalkeeper, will be starting in goal. Mick Quirk will start at centre back alongside Avoisin, who is of course the new signing at centre back. Ruben Burgos returns on loan. I actually didn't pinpoint that. We'd already agreed that deal at the back end of last season. He comes back on loan from Liverpool for the rest of this season and retains his spot at centre-back. Fontana is going to start in defensive midfield as, what's his face, Benassar is currently injured. I think he's injured for quite a while as well. So Fontana will be able to become a little bit more familiar in that position and in that role. Luke Daly, of course, we all know him, starting at left wing-back. Lewis O'Brien is not going to be starting. It's going to be Samuel Stankwell. We're still training him in that central midfield role. He's not entirely comfortable in it yet, so I need to get him as much game time as possible. And he's just a better player than Lewis O'Brien if you look at raw attributes. Olivio, what's his name? Osvaldo Rojas, starting in central midfield, our lone player from Man City. Platt, who we've spoken about. Mizzine, who we've spoken about. Oro, who we've spoken about, starting up top. Alexi will be getting as much game time as possible, either up front or on the wings. It's probably going to be up front for this game because um, Oru has just returned from injury. He's only played one game so far for us this season. He missed the first and uh, we just need to build up his match fitness a little bit. Derby County then. Uh, what do we expect from these boys? George Baldock, we are aware of. Matthew Ryan, Mason Holgate. They've got a decent side. I believe they were just outside the playoffs last season so they should be 
uh, a tasty challenge for us. But as I've stated already, I expect to win this league with a squad. So this squad kind of reminds me of what we were like with Barnsley in that second championship season. We absolutely ran away with it in that in that season. I'm hoping for something a little bit similar this season whilst trying to improve a lot of our own players and the younger players that we've got in the squad um, to see if they could potentially be ready for a Premier League push, at least in part of the squad, if not a starter. But yeah, some of these signs, obviously the lone players are going to get us promoted, hopefully. Um, I'm already speaking about it as if it's already happened, but... The first couple of games did leave me feeling very confident. But the first highlight of this game, and it's Derby County in possession, coming down on the right-hand side with George Baldo. But Mezayin gets in there and dispossesses him on the left-hand side. Has he got many options in the box? He finds Stanko on the edge. Platt's in the box. Uh, oh, he's offside. I was just about to celebrate. Second highlight of the game comes 16 minutes in. The ball's played over the top for Stavanovic. Is that our former man from uh, Barnsley? I think it is. And Joel Pereira with a comfortable save. 30 minutes gone now. We have ourselves another highlight. Mezayim with the ball over the top for Oru. Can he finish? He certainly can. David Oru gets his second goal of the season. Hopefully the second of many. And he puts us 1-0 up 30 minutes in. Well done by Mezayim here. Uh, the ball is won by Luke Daly, I believe. Headed down to Rojas. Find Mezayim. And this is a beautiful ball over the top. Perfectly touched down by Oru and a great finish. And the game has come to a halt at four half time. David Oru's goal, the only one of the game. We've played pretty well so far in this first half. Hopefully we can continue that in the second. And I think I'm going to get Oru off straight away. I'm not risking him. We'll get Alexi on up top and see if our finish boy can do a little bit better. First highlight of the second half comes 48 minutes into the game. Rojas with the ball over the top for Alexi. Can he finish? Come on, Alexi. I want you to sort of... Uh, get the starting spot up top secretly secretly that's what I want to happen Rojas with a corner he's whipped in and Mezayin gets his head on him but Matthew Ryan saves Mezayin is struggling a little bit out there we'll bring on our new Chilean Jorge Coronado on that left hand side see what he can do for the final 30 minutes or so Derby County come forward with a menage it's played through for Stavanovic Joel Pereira with a good save we've got to be careful Derby and no mugs with 15 minutes to go, we will look to make our final substitution of the game. Terence Platt, uh, he's going to have to stay on. But we can bring on Lewis O'Brien for Osvaldo Rojas in the centre of the park. We've got good options off the bench now. And it's changes I'm more than happy to make. Luke Daly finds a Burgos on this right-hand side. We've got a lot of men forward. So if we lose the ball, we are absolutely screwed. Fontana finds uh, O'Brien. He loses the ball. I've got Fela coming. Voisin with a good challenge, both Derby County retain possession. He plays it through to check on this left hand side. Stavanovic, the ball's over the top. You could see it coming through the centre. Menaj. <sighs> we need to be careful, lads, are we? Only five minutes to go in this one. Time is ticking away, and it's a corner for Derby. Please. Stanko gets clear. Can we get to the ball first? We can't. Holgate does. Stavanovic clears. Burgos manages to get it clear. Can Alexi bring it down? Coronado. Play through Alexi. Come on, he's through. Ah, oh, he's held up the ball. Lewis O'Brien's the man who takes over. He drives through past the defence. Ryan with a good save. Two minutes to go in this game. And there is another highlight. To be quite honest with you, I prefer it if there wasn't. Platt on this right-hand side. Can he whip it in? He finds Stanko on the edge. He goes for goal. Oh, it's blocked by the uh, defender. Back out of Burgos. Back to Stanko a second time. He hits the ball. <laughs> oh, man. We've done everything but score this second goal today. Luke Daly to Alexi. Is he going to whip the ball in? No, he plays it to Coronado. Plays it back to Daly. He's whipped the ball in. Now O'Brien's there. And he goes over the top. And that is it. That brings our first live com of this season to an end. Huddersfield won Derby County nil. A dominant performance by us. But that wasn't without its uh, trepidation there. Derby could have well easily nicked a point out of that game. So obviously only three games in. You can't read too much into this. We have the likes of Everton down in the championship this season. With Moyes Keane. Still a player at Everton. Why haven't any Premier League side signed him yet? But I'm still thinking we are going to win this league. It's in my head now. And if we don't, I'll be mightily. As long as we get promoted, that is all that matters. The board expect it this season. We need to win promotion regardless of how that is done. Either through the playoffs or in automatic qualification spots. That's what we have to do. But early season form looks well. Three games, three wins. We are delighted with that. In terms of the next episode then, this season is going to be a bit of a quick one. I'm going to come back maybe the end of October, mid-November, 
And the next step, well, that will be the next episode. Maybe Stoke Brentford, something like that. And then the episode after that will be the January transfer window. We'll do two more episodes to finish the season. So it's going to be like a five episode season as we look to get promotion to the Premier League. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.